Hello guys, my name is Chip and I'm the Managing Director of PNK Thornton Restorations, Classic Jaguar Specialist since 1967. Today we're exploring a what to look for when buying a classic car. As a company, we get paid to inspect these classic Jaguars in, in our situation here uh, at Daimler. We, uh, with all our knowledge and expertise, we are able to identify uh, potential problems that might occur after you have purchased the vehicle. Um, I'm, next, I'm going to take you through the in-depth process of what to look out when inspecting one of these cars. The first take I take before the inspection is to do my homework and that means looking into the car's background and in particular the MOT history to see if the car has had any failures in the recent years and how they were rectified over, over the years. Um, I also look if, uh, to see if the vehicle has been involved in any accidents, in the, any insurance claims in the again in the last um, period of time. Another good and important aspect is the road tax history, which gives you this continuous history if the car has been on the road or if it's been sown or if the car was enjoyed for various come, you also see the mileage go up into the history. Um, and that's a clear indication that the car has been used. Another aspect of uh, the homework is to do a, a few background checks to see if the car has actually changed owners uh, in the last few years. So this could mean that the, that the car has been enjoyed for a really long time by uh, under one certain ownership, or it's been uh, traded um, a few times um, over the last few years. That's a clear indication. If the car has, has had a continuous long ownership, it could be a good sign meaning that the car has been looked after uh, by only one person or a family over a period of time. While if the, the vehicle has changed owner a few times, it might be um, not necessarily a good sign. My inspection normally starts from, from the front of the vehicle, where we analyze the condition of the bodywork, the, the chrome work, the condition of the lights, um, and condition of the paint and therefore the metal that lies underneath. Everything is noted, including all the positive aspects that we find. Inspections like this are not necessarily about criticizing the car and looking for points for improvement. There are also uh, numerous very positive aspects that we find uh, to do with the vehicle. And those are very important just to emphasize the, the condition of the vehicle, either good or bad. On a car like this, one thing that stands out uh, all the time is the panel alignment or the panel gap, um, as we refer to. And this is the actual dimension, the measurement between two panels. What we're looking for is a nice uniform gap, horizontally and vertically. We're not looking for, ideally, we don't want any panels sticking out uh, or any imperfections like this and on this particular vehicle you can see that there are certain areas that could do with improvement. Here we have the uh, gap between the bulkhead and the bonnet and in, you can see a very slight imperfection over here where the bonnet sticks out ever so slightly and it could do with a little adjustment. Other imperfections that we notice is the condition of the paint of the paintwork under the chrome element and you can see uh, possibly poor preparation uh, of the paint or moisture that's been trapped up under the chrome element and therefore created this bubbling effect that over time is only going to get worse. Other elements that we'll be looking at is the alignment of the panels on the side and here you can clearly see how the bottom of the door sticks out ever so slightly and is not perfectly aligned with the front wing. Also, the paintwork suffered some damage um, into this section and this is possibly where the 
the the weld is the joint for the two panels between the wing and the seal and you can see here there is a crack in the paint where moisture will get in and create a, over time it will create a slightly larger problem other points of improvement are the gaps between uh, the rear side of the front door and the b pillar and here we have well a gap that is not quite ideal the door is sticking out about one centimeter right at the bottom and again it's it's just not no good alignment of the door against the pillar the importance of doing the research before we inspect the vehicle is uh, is shown over here where we notice signs of rust in the usual places for a car of this age and this particular model um, in particular we have rust seen and found in the lower section of the body um, and here we have the spots that shield the top of the rear arches and then we notice uh, signs of rust and corrosion on the bottom side of the bodywork. This particular wheel has suffered um, a bit of damage on, the, on this side here where the surface is not round anymore um, it's actually perfectly flat uh, although it's, the paint is presented very nicely I bet it's not running perfectly true with this um, with this imperfection here the chrome cover has seen better days uh, and the chrome is started to to peel off this is not uh, unfortunately this is not dirt it is actually superficial very superficial corrosion that is presented on uh, alongside the face of the of the cover another element to look at is the condition of the rubber seals over the decades these perish um, and will let water and wind inside the vehicle while the vehicle is at speed therefore the condition of the rubber is very important there are ways and means uh, to keep these rubbers fresh moisturize the rubbers um, and keep them um, keep them in good condition um, and this is what we can see here is a fairly new rubber that was however fitted incorrectly and there is a massive gap here at the bottom and there are gaps also on the top side which no doubt will create a lot of wind noise uh, which will make the vehicle very uncomfortable to drive next we'll be looking at the condition of the chrome frames here you have uh, the gutter rail uh, which presents itself in uh, excellent excellent condition there are a few marks here probably when it was fitted somebody was a bit over ambitious with uh, with putting it in quickly However, it is presented well, and the situation is very similar for the window frame. There are slight, ever, ever so slight to touch signs of pitting over the chrome surface. Um, while the chrome handle seems to be in much better condition, possibly due to the fact that it is an element that um, you touch all the time. Therefore, over the years, it is possible that somebody re-chromed this chrome handle rather than the window frames and the door frames. One thing to look out for is any potential damage that the car might have suffered in an accident either at the back or at the front. And we are looking for imperfect panel alignment that could tell us that something like this might have happened. What we've noticed here is the gap between the edge of the bumper onto the passenger side, which you'll see here, it is maybe one mil, while on the driver's side, the gap seems to be quite a lot bigger. And there are several explanations why this might be. One of them could be the shape of the bumper. Over the time, maybe the bumper got somehow 
out of shape or it could, it could be in the same time the panel alignment and how square the car is onto one side um, in comparison to the other side. One other thing that we look out for going back to the um, going back to the panel gap another thing that we look out for is the constant gap between the boot panel and the rear wings and in per what we see here is a certain gap the boot being sticking out ever so slightly being a little bit proud maybe one or two mil which could be a sign of maybe a large bag or a box being in the boot um, at one time and somebody slamming the boot shut and actually bending the boot out to place and we see this time and time again with with these cars either the uh, the Jaguar uh, Mark II's or the uh, the E-types where where the boot panel is 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 just a little bit proud and you can see it very well here that over time somebody tried to force close it another thing that we notice is the difference in in panel gap if here at the bottom we have maybe one mil the boot panel comes very very close to to the wing on top we have maybe three or four mil difference so again when the car was in metal the the panel was possibly not aligned very well next on the agenda is the condition of the rear lights and here we notice quite a few cracks into the indicator's lens um, this could come from from anywhere either over time the plastic uh, hardened and deteriorated or from a simple bump uh, of an element of course if it's not leaking any water if it's not letting any water in then you could possibly live with it however for integrity the, this should be replaced another element to look out for is the condition of the gaskets or the rubbers between the light element in particular here we have the headlight and the body of the car a lot of the time these are uh, old and in poor condition and they allow water to infiltrate in between the body and the light unit and water gets into where it shouldn't be this vehicle is presented with the rubber seals in very good condition and you can see they are squished in properly uh, there's no cracks into them uh, and this will seal very well with the mark ii shape stroke daimler 250 v8 one element to inspect closely is the condition of the paintwork and therefore the metal underneath uh, in this area under the headlights just behind the bumper a lot this is a moisture trap and a lot of water gets trapped here um, and over time it creates a lot of rust problems as we see here this vehicle is presented very very well and there are little to none signs of uh, corrosion is in this area and it is the same on the other side so thumbs up for this this vehicle another thing to con to consider when inspecting a vehicle like this is the condition of the tires and although our tire is presented in good condition with excellent thread we have seven mil thread the age of the tire could create a potential problem um, these tires that we have here are dated 2010 and that makes them over 13 years old to find out the age of the tire you're looking for a four digit number the first two digits of the number represent the week while the last two digits of the number represent the year the tire was manufactured in on our tire we have a date of week 32 and the year is 2010 another potential problem for the bodywork of the 
Jaguar Mark II or the Daimler 250V8 as we have here is the filler cap and as you can see this one has uh, signs of superficial cor corrosion under the paint uh, although overall it is presented really well the paint condition under or behind the panel is very good and it's all intact it's not been bashed or damaged uh, by the fuel pumps um, therefore thumbs up for this vehicle over here where the side lights are we see certain cracks and deterioration of the paint um, and this is very likely caused by the lead that um, the the element was was prepared to so from factory in 1960s Jaguar were not using filler to bridge the gap between the panel and the actual housing of the side lights but they were leading the panel and what this means is that they were taking a bar of lead heating it up and then shaping it at a very high temperature into 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 shape shaping it in um, allowing it to cool down and after that sanding it perfectly to create a good panel match however over time leads create lead creates serious rust problems and i think this is what we're seeing here when it comes to the condition of the paintwork and therefore the metal work on the jaguar mark ii or daimler 250 v8 one area of concern is is the underside of the front wheel arches and you can see here that the paint started to delaminate and the metal work is starting to fall apart um, and this is not a really good sign to see we would be looking at the middle part of the wheel arch but also lower down where we might find signs of potential corrosion to recap we'll put on screen now the main elements of our exterior inspection part of our uh, pre-purchase inspection we try to inspect all elements of the vehicle before we even turn the ignition key therefore we are now looking at the interior and we're trying to analyze what we see in front of us the condition of the veneer panels looks looks good um, it's not perfect there are certain imperfections certain cracks uh, probably caused by the sunlight and the heat over time the um, the wood delaminates and creates cracks into the uh, the wood panels but as you can see here the door caps are in very good condition there are no scratches um, and no major imperfections and so are the uh, the door cards uh, and including the pockets on a lot of the cars we see um, door pockets that are falling apart and they are coming off but no on this vehicle the the door cards are in excellent condition followed by the condition of the seats the front seats uh, in particular the driver's uh, side this is the seat that takes the most um, the most wear um, but this one um, they are the leather is presented very well it looks like over time it's been moisturized because uh, it is quite soft to touch and there are no major cracks the dash panels uh, are presented well and the two main gauges the rev counter and the speedo uh, the faces of them are in good condition very readable the colors are are bright and also very important the colors between the two is matching um, we see some of the cars that the instruments have been misplaced or replaced over time and the colors are the white color is just not quite matching but is not the case here the the instruments look very go good and the same situation applies to the small gauges uh, which 
which um, yeah were are excellent and readable in this situation in this for this vehicle um, it looks like uh, an aftermarket radio was fitted uh, with Bluetooth connectivity um, and allowing the quick charge of the phone but also very interestingly uh, a warning hazards switch has been fitted uh, a very nice safety touch in the current uh, road conditions where we drive a lot faster and our classic vehicles are maybe not so visible um, in this situation hazards have been fitted and the switch is just here under the dashboard the condition of the steering wheel is good is fair um, there are some cracks into the into the material the outside material um, but nevertheless this doesn't extract uh, nevertheless this doesn't detract in any way from the driving experience of this classic four-door saloon okay the carpets the carpets are presented well um, they've probably been renewed at some point what I would look for in particular is any damp or moisture um, under the carpets they you can also detect this uh, dampness from uh, the smell that is in the vehicle in this instance uh, I, I, I wouldn't say there is much dampness I think the vehicle is kept in a garage overnight therefore um, is good and the carpets look good and underneath they all look good the condition of the headlining is good and the sun visors they've probably been uh, refreshed updated at some point also the top uh, veneer cuppings they they are presented very well and uh, in keep with um, our 1960s saloon and that's it for interior another element to look look out for is the closing and the opening of the panels uh, or like the doors the bonnet and uh, the boot uh, we're at the, at the rear of the vehicle and we're looking at the boot and here we have um, a very nice clean boot <laughs> the stay is in uh, very functional and what we the first thing I notice on the inside of the boot is the sound deadening uh, on the on the underside what this does it uh, takes away some of the resonance that the tin effect that a, a car like this would create um, and it just makes it a bit more pleasant to live with part of my inspection for the rear of the vehicle I would be looking for any petrol fumes that uh, I could detect because the fuel tank is at the, at the rear end of the vehicle a lot of the time the rubber pipes that connect the petrol tank with the petrol pump or further afield to the front of the vehicle a lot of time they are not perfectly tight and that's where petrol leaks could appear so this is one thing to look out for another very important point is the condition of the metal work at the rear of the vehicle um, the petrol tank itself is a moisture trap and if water ingresses towards the petrol tank this could potentially generate corrosion problems for the underside of the vehicle where the petrol tank is under the bonnet as expected we find the Hemi 2.5 liter V8 engine together with all the engine sub assemblies the first thing we look for is the chassis plate um, and why this is important is because we're trying to double check the research we did before we came to, to inspect the car against the records that Daimler or Jaguar held at the time for these cars. When the car were produced, they left the factory with a certain chassis number, a certain body number, a certain engine number, and a certain gearbox number. In our situation, for the Mark II shaped Jaguar or 
the Daimler 2.5 liter V8, the chassis plate is located on the right hand side of the engine bay and contains all the information as described previously. The first thing to analyze when it comes to the engine bay compartment is we're trying to assess if there's been any oil or water leaks um, and these could be easily spotted by the marks left behind. The water uh, or the coolant leaves either the color of the coolant like we see here some green marks onto the aluminium housings and this could potentially came for this circlip. Uh, other areas of concerns could be imperfect electrical connections that could potentially cause overheating issues um, or even worse uh, a fire if left unattended. What we see here was uh, a, lot of, a lot of positivity, um, excellent prepared connections, electrical connections, the heater box is presented very well, uh, it's probably been out and rebuilt recently together with the heater motor. The, all the nuts and bolts on the heater motor are in great condition. They are not presenting any signs of rust or any other imperfections. The rubber hoses are in good condition. There are no cracks whatsoever. It means that the water or the heat element can't escape. We would also be looking at the radiator uh, and the condition, especially at the bottom. And again, look for potential leaks that could generate the vehicle, could cause the vehicle to overheat. On the right hand side, we have the brakes reservoir and one the first thing we look for is the condition of the rubber hose under the brake reservoir a lot of the time the pipe the rubber pipe that sits under the reservoir connecting the metal pipe to the reservoir is not rated to take uh, brake fluid and the brake fluid sweats through the rubber pipe, drips over the metalwork and creates some serious corrosion problems. And this is one thing to look out for. This could potentially ruin a good vehicle like this. Another thing on our agenda is the condition of the ignition leads. And here we have an upgraded lumination system. So electronic ignition that has been recently fitted to, to this vehicle. It's a, a very welcome upgrade for when you need your vehicle to start reliably during those uh, winter months. Another thing to look for is, same as the rear of the vehicle, any petrol fumes that could escape from the lines or the fittings. Uh, we would be checking for all that. We certainly don't want it, any petrol leaks. Um, and that applies to, to oil as well. We would be looking for any major oil leaks that uh, might come from the front or the rear engine of the engine. Of course, if there are no oil leaks whatsoever, this becomes uh, suspicious because we all know that all the Jaguars and demos at the time have to leak a little bit of oil, otherwise there is no oil in the vehicle. When you inspect the vehicle that is located with the client, a lot of time it happens that we don't have access to any ramps. In a situation like this, where the car is in our workshop, this makes life a lot easier and we're able to create, to generate a fully documented report of the underside of the vehicle. Now having access to our ramps, uh, one thing that jumps into our eyes is the additional access to the bodywork of the car and the first thing i would do is go around the vehicle again uh, on the underside and see if there are any other signs of corrosion maybe i have missed previously what we see here is the driver's side uh, front wing bottom corner as you can see presents quite some nasty corrosion and it's one to be addressed in the future.
We move on to the central of the vehicle and the first thing that jumps into my eyes is the oil leak that comes comes potentially from the rear of the engine if not well it, it could come from both really um, there are quite a few signs of oil leaks fresh ones uh, right here onto the steering box on the oil filter on the sun so the gearbox between the engine and the gearbox we might have a, an oil leak you can you can differentiate between the gearbox oil and the engine oil based on the different color of oil so if the engine oil has a more green black color the gearbox oil could be more stores red or pink um, and this is what we see here although it is predominantly engine oil blown all the way from the front of the vehicle and all the way carried all the way back and this is what we have here so the other worrying signs would be the superficial corrosion just started to appear on the jacking points obviously the vehicle is equipped with these four elements which are the front two jacking points and the rear jacking points and because the vehicle was lifted and and uh, brought down several times over the last few years you can see corrosion has started to appear and is not protected therefore over time it will potentially it could get worse we move on to the suspension and the brakes at the front of the vehicle and what we notice is again a lot of superficial corrosion in places all the nuts and bolts have been affected by the elements they have not been protected over the time um, and uh, this won't affect the drivability of the vehicle the rubber seems to be so the rubber ball joints seem to be in great condition and the, the, the clips are there as well which is nice to see uh, all the grease nipples are present um, all those covered in grease but that's by the by the brakes seem to be in in decent condition although presenting some signs of superficial corrosion and so are the brake discs the brake discs uh, are slightly grooved possibly from stones getting trapped in between the brake disc and the, the brake pad and the caliper uh, overall the brake discs are in adequate condition other things to consider are the condition of the rubber pipes under the vehicle so under the engine bay and here uh, we can see that the pipes are in great condition they've been replaced recently the vehicle has been looked after which is very nice to see uh, one thing to look for is water leaks at the main elbow at the bottom of the radiator and we can see here that the radiator has been leaking a little bit but uh, nothing to be worried about the suspension vehicle the suspension bushes on this vehicle are in good condition there are no major cracks in them um, I would say I would I would hazard a guess to say that these are fairly recent um, and again it's a sign it's a good sign to show that the vehicle has been properly looked after in the recent years the engine mount rubbers are also in good condition um, going with the bushes and again this helps with vibration between the engine and the body of the car reducing it if the rubber for the engine mounts is is good the, in, the vibration felt inside the car uh, it will be diminished moving on to the rear of the vehicle we analyze the rear brakes which similarly to the front they are in decent condition there is a little bit of superficial corrosion on the discs but nothing to be worried about 
this vehicle will stop. Uh, the brake calipers are in good condition and I would say a fairly new installation. There isn't much slack into the handbrake cable, which is great to see. That means we're gonna have a functional handbrake. It's good. Uh, the rear axle the diff is licking a little bit of oil uh, and they all do that, they all lick a little bit. It, it gets worrying if there is a massive puddle of oil at the back of the car but uh, by just by looking at it I would say that this is nothing to worry about it's in great condition right. the stainless steel exhaust uh, seems to be a good addition to the vehicle it's not blowing there are no signs of of the exhaust gases escaping in any way the exhaust manifolds on uh, both sides the left side and the right side are presented in good condition uh, there are very few signs or very minor sign of uh, exhaust gases blowing at the elbows but nothing to worry about this being the the v8 version of the um, of the of the engine um, it has the exhaust manifolds on both sides not like the jaguar xk engine where the exhaust manifolds are together by on one side. One thing to look out, look for when uh, looking at one of these Jaguar Mark IIs or Mark I or Daimler 250 V8 as we have here is the alignment of the rear springs. Several times we've had uh, cars in the workshop, they had a, a squeaky sound coming from the back. And 99% of the time, this is caused by the alignment of the rear springs. If this rear springs are not perfectly aligned if they are twisted ever so slightly they will start creaking and rattling and it it will take for the untrained eye it will take quite a long time to figure it out where it comes from following our uh, in-depth inspection of the exterior of the metal work and the underside of the vehicle we concluded that the vehicle is safe to be on the road therefore it is time to to turn the key and there she is good oil pressure the oil pressure is picking up nicely uh, the water temperature is not quite there yet as we only started the vehicle uh, one thing to be careful when test driving a car that is new to you, to you is the fuel level and it happened to us a few times where we are given a vehicle to test. However, it has no petrol in it. Uh, and the worst thing that can happen is that you break down in the middle of nowhere um, and that could create quite a bit of a problem in a delay. Um, therefore, make sure you have the right petrol level before setting off on a test drive. Following that, we will make sure that the indicators work and then we have audible uh, signaling inside the vehicle for left hand turns and right hand turns would make sure that the brake lights work um, and also the side lights and the headlights the beep, deep beam is is the next point on our agenda making sure that uh, that works adequately and the washers the wipers and the horn you want to put the horn on so um, I can put the horn on get that you want to get the brake light I'll get the washers, look. Okay. One thing to notice is the brake fluid indicator, stroke handbrake indicator. This light on the dashboard is supposed to come on when the handbrake is on. In our instance, it seems to be malfunctioning. Uh, there is brake fluid, I did check, 
so I suspect it's just an electrical connection or the level sensor inside the handbrake there is a little piston that goes in and out to indicate that the handbrake is on or off uh, that has worn out uh, therefore the indicator is not on right you want to hop in so automatic transmission the first thing to do is press the gear selector pedal and put the lever into drive and gently lift and we're away the 2.5 liter v8 is not particularly spring chicken engine um, it generates i believe around 190 brake horsepower which is a significant amount for the 1960s however the automatic transmission makes our vehicle a bit more comfortable to drive but also not very sporty the first thing i notice is the oil pressure picking up which is nice to see and so is the water temperature the vehicle the engine is getting up to temperature and that is an indication that we can we can put it through its paces I absolutely adore the thin steering wheel um, and it's quite a large diameter steering wheel as well which makes the drive very special it is a big car the Daimler 250 V8 is a four-door saloon of sensible weight for the period um, the steering seems to be responding very well it, the vehicle is tra tracking in a straight line the suspension noise is adequate it, it's not noisy because as we saw earlier the suspension bushes are in good condition and so are the, the shock absorbers the Borg Werner gearbox it is smooth it's only a three-speed gearbox nothing like the modern BMW nine-speed ZF gearboxes but for the 1960s this was meant to be a revolutionary gearbox offering well gray space and space we have a good driver on our hands I have to say excellent suspension good steering input with minimal effort the brakes are responding well and this is confirmed following our inspection by how good this vehicle drives <clears throat> a lot of the time uh, I jump into vehicles and I can certainly feel it pulling under the brakes either to left or to the right right side and this is not pleasant to see because it can catch you un unexpected and uh, quite a lot of damage can occur from that another worrying problem that we see time and time again is when the tracking the geometry of the vehicle is not right uh, not as per the manufacturer and in a straight line the vehicle is pulling um, again to one side or the other other problems that might occur when test driving the vehicle is typical electrical problems the vehicle doesn't start or is, it, or is hesitant to start misfires are another common common uh, occurrence where uh, there's again there's an electrical connection or we've seen all sorts water leaks over electrical parts creating a misfire or just bad ignition leads bad spark plugs the spark plugs no gap correctly um, just a typical Volkswagen car the wind noise coming from the quarter window seals is significant and you can actually feel it through the window at speed 
um, is something that you would need to look, be looked at in the near future. This concludes our pre-purchase inspection video. Hopefully this gives you a bit more confidence uh, into looking at the classic car when you're looking to buy it. For more information, please visit our website. And remember, you can inspect the classic Daimler like we did today in the same way you would inspect a Porsche or a Ferrari. Thank you.